Oh boy. This is gonna be a fun one. So recently I wa- Oh. So recently I watched Jim Sterling's video titled The Addictive Cost of Video Game Monetization. And well, it got me thinking. Because while I think the gaming community's hatred really for loot boxes and microtransactions is founded well and has reason for being, I think it's a little too far. And I, in this video, I wanna lay out for you guys why I think loot boxes aren't actually that bad. And why I think they might actually just have a net positive effect on the gaming industry as, at large if we look towards the future. Or I'm just wrong. Roll the intro. So before we get started, I do want to lay some groundwork for you guys just to distinguish the kind of loot boxes I'm talking about when I say they're good. And for me, that would be loot boxes that are just cosmetic only. Ones that don't give the players any extra sort of advantage over one another in actual gameplay. As those I would completely argue against, as I'm sure most people would. But today, I'm going to be talking about strictly cosmetic loot boxes and cosmetics. Let's get started. So the first argument I want to make in favor of loot boxes and microtransactions in games today is actually just the pros outweigh the cons. And what I mean by this is while yes, it does suck that you can be in a lobby for your new favorite game and just be constantly nagged to buy new and impressive cosmetic things, I think overall these additions actually help. For instance, how many big games nowadays are just completely free to play? Anyone can easily just load up Fortnite on any of their devices and pay zero cents and play the entire game over multiple seasons without spending a dime. This isn't because my boy Tim Sweeney Todd is just a saint and wants to help everyone out. This is because Fortnite can get all of its revenue and more than it even would probably otherwise through microtransactions. And while these Fortnite $20 skins can be seen as pretty predatory, especially to younger players, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment, it still doesn't take away from the fact that young or old players alike can play all of these games for completely free. And I think this is a kind of a point that a lot of people just brush over. Before games all were at least like $60 and up, you know, some Steam games are less for indies, but Regardless, these games are completely free and opens up gaming to a wide variety of audience that otherwise wouldn't have even put $10 down just to get started. What microtransactions do is essentially allow the player themselves to choose how much they want to fund this project they're playing. Are you playing Fortnite every night for hours? Yeah, it probably shouldn't be an issue for you to send them a few bucks, right? They're supplying you so much entertainment. But this also allows people to just come in and try the game and say, hey, I don't like this at all. I played it for a few weeks and I'm just going to set it to aside without spending any money. Another thing that microtransactions do, especially for these multiplayer games, is help them keep up their server costs. As a software developer myself, I know that server costs these days can be quite expensive. And allowing developers a way to pay for these services in perpetuity through microtransactions is just another huge benefit. But where I do think some issues can really arise is when gameplay systems and the game itself is changed in order to kind of nudge players in the way of purchasing different microtransactions and outfits. For instance, if a developer makes a game extremely grindy and just a haul to get through just so that players will purchase, you know, say EXP boost, that's a problem. But that's a problem that I don't think we should just doom microtransactions because of. These are choices made by developers that we can just disdain on their own and cause developers to stop doing. But that doesn't mean we have to say microtransactions as a whole are a bad thing. They should only be bad when they're implemented in ways like this. Because at the end of the day, there's always going to be companies trying to get that extra dime out of people and doing scummy things. But I think as we can already see in the industry, there are so many companies treating microtransactions and loot boxes in a good way, like Fortnite. Sure, squins might be $20, but they don't affect gameplay at all, and you can play the entire thing for free as long as you want. We should be encouraging developers to implement good microtransaction policies instead of just turning our backs to microtransactions as a whole. 
when they in many ways are improving the industry through cheaper games and just easier access from a wider audience. Next up though, I want to address Jim Sterling's points a little more directly. So in Jim's video, he gave a lot of personal and first-hand accounts from players that had gambling problems really with microtransactions where they would just spend more and more and it would drag them into this hole that they got themselves in, where their friends and family just watched them kind of ruin their life away just spending all of their money on microtransactions. And while these stories are sad, and I do feel for these people and hope they can find a way to get out of these just grudges of buying more and more microtransactions, I think it's important we also look at the numbers. So for instance, in 2016, Wired UK released a study where they found that half of all mobile game microtransaction income comes from 0.19% of the player base. Yep, you heard that right. 0.19%. And here's the thing, are a lot of those players, the people that Jim had on the show and really talked about and gave those personal stories? Of course, yeah. And it's horrible and, it's, and it does suck and these microtransactions are in a way preying on these people. But when you're talking about 0.19% of your player base, I don't know if we can necessarily call that an epidemic or problem. And that's really my whole gist with microtransactions I'm trying to get across to you guys in this video. Because even if microtransactions are predatory in some ways, especially to gambling types, and have their drawbacks, overall there's just so many benefits that I've already gone through that outweigh these so much, especially when you look at the numbers of people that are truly affected by things like this. Because there does come a point where people have to own up to their own personal responsibility. Yes, are microtransactions going to affect some players more than others and make it almost impossible, even based on maybe brain chemistry, to just not keep buying and buying? Maybe. But at the end of the day, if this is just a super small majority of the entire player base, I don't think it's something we should really derive that much attention from. Should we try to help these players in, in any way we can? Of course. But we shouldn't all be out parading microtransactions and how bad they are every day on Reddit and YouTube just because there's a few players it's affecting. Let's try and help these players out as much as we can, but let's not take away all the benefits of microtransactions like free games and easy access while we're at it. But if I haven't convinced you guys already, let's talk a little bit more about who exactly is paying for all these microtransactions. Not with feelings and anecdotes, but with cold, hard study and facts. So for instance, MocoSpace, the largest mobile gaming community in North America, conducted a study where they found players between the age of 18 to 25 in mobile games, only 10% of that range actually bought virtual goods. With players at the age of 45 years or older buying at a rate of 70% of their pool. And what this shows us is that the large majority of microtransaction purchases, at least on mobile, and we can uh, safely assume this will carry over to other environments as well, the large majority is much older male men. And this just goes to show that the narrative that the gaming community likes to spit out a lot, that these microtransactions are preying on kids and forcing them to buy things, it just might not be fully true. But wait, I know what you guys are thinking. Maybe the reason all these purchases are from older people is because, well, it's kids getting their parents to buy things, right? But at that point, I think I just have a simple answer to that, and that's tough shit. Honestly, at the end of the day, if a parent is willing to give their child a credit card and they can willingly see these purchases happening on their bank statements every month, if they don't go and stop this, that's their fault not the video game industry for having microtransactions in the first place. With great power comes great responsibility, but I think in this case, there's really just great power with very little responsibility, and there's just a lot of adults not really taking any onus at all. If a parent sees Little Billy's charge for Dora the Explorer, Babies R Us, Frozen Smackdown mashup for $200 on their monthly credit card statement, and they don't take the credit card away and stop the purchases, how can you not argue that's their problem? And hell, let's just go even further back. The, the younger kid should not be in charge of a credit card unless the parent is very well aware of what's happening anyways. At the end of the day, none of these purchases should be occurring from younger children. 
It should always at least be going through an adult that knowingly knows what's going on. And if they don't, well, hey, <laughs> you gotta start parenting a little better, right? And on top of this, like I already said, this really narrows down the target group that this could affect a lot to just people that have gambling issues. And as I've already said, this is a small minority of the entire gaming community. And I think because of that, we should focus more on helping them instead of just taking away microtransactions and taking away all the positive benefits from the many because of the few. But yeah, guys, that's really all I wanted to talk about for the subject. If you guys enjoyed the video or want to support, feel free to like and subscribe. Also, if you guys want to talk about topics like this live, feel free to check out my twitch.tv uh, link down below. I'd really appreciate that as well, guys. Because at the end of the day, all I'm really trying to say here is, well, games are an art and they are beautiful and they should always strive to be the best they can. At the end of the day, they're also always run by a business. And these businesses need to make money, right? Games many years ago used to be 60 bucks and even with inflation that hasn't really changed and with server costs and large multiplayer environments nowadays especially with computing services like aws and azure costs are very high and there needs to be a way for these gaming companies to pay all of their employees so that they can keep doing this great work over and over and i think microtransactions finds a way to do this and not only that but improves in, on the whole gaming environment by allowing everyone to play free games with super easy access with all their friends across the world. Are there bad and predatory microtransactions and loot boxes? Yes, of course. But at the end of the day, there are just so many benefits to having these microtransactions and so few downsides. The amount of players that are actually affected by gambling status is so low. And as we I've already shown, a lot of these younger players aren't buying in the ways we think they are. And even for those that are, it's through parents that should have the responsibility and onus to stop their children from doing this if it is a problem. At the end of the day, microtransactions will help gaming in the future and will help it grow already past the huge growth it's had in the past few years. And I hope people can see past the blind hatred on Reddit and YouTube for microtransactions and loot boxes. And instead, just focus on asking the developers to implement it in the right way. Because I think when done like that, it's a really great thing for gaming. Thanks for watching, guys.